is an award-winning actress, screenwriter, director and filmmaker. She has been featured on such shows as Mad Men, Community, Scandal, Hello Ladies, Parks and Recreation, Californication and HBO's Newsroom, as well as a handful of hip-hop music videos. In the award-winning short, Laboratory Conditions, she served as a body double and stand-in for Marissa Tomei, and had roles in the festival-winning feature Damn Foreigners and scientific thriller Transcendence, her third film that starred Johnny Depp. As an independent filmmaker, Sean Riley creates within the drama, thriller, romantic and experimental genres. In the upcoming features, Better. And Volume at Nocturne, she serves as producer and co-star, both projects in which she wrote based on actual events from her life. Together, her films have earned 122 awards. We hope you enjoy finding out more about Sean. So before we got started, I had you pick five numbers. And these are the questions that correspond to the numbers you pick. So if you don't like the question, it's your fault. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) I can take accountability. I'm not afraid. (laughs) Your first question is Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts and why? Dunkin' Donuts, hands down. Starbucks, uh, I love their I love their cups, <laughs> but uh, their coffee tea is burnt to me. And I will go there on occasion if there's money in the Starbucks account. But Dunkin' Donuts, they always have oat milk. Can't say that about Starbucks. They're out oftentimes. Um, and also, uh, what else do I like about Dunkin'? I just I just like their colors. <laughs> I like the hot pink. <laughs> orange <laughs> the really pretty side yes Just i love some branding <laughs> i love some pretty branding but i also realized recently they do sell tumblers so i may have to convert but we do not have dunkin donuts um in too many places here in las vegas no it'd be crispy cream right no um we don't starbucks is the chain here oh. unfortunately but i like to um patron you know smaller coffee shops that's my thing that, that's what I do here but um Duncan we only have in like virgin hotels and like two or three other places and the two or three other places because I love the virgin one um they never have a medium-sized cup they're always out of medium cups so if I try to order a medium they're like yeah we only have small or large hmm. well what if I wanted more than a small but not quite a large or like give me two smalls but they don't do that there they'll, they'll do that other places but to be fair i still like duncan because they're not as um prevalent here yeah uh what is the most important lesson you have learned in life um i think so far yeah <laughs> i think uh when you have a dream or a goal about something, I think it's important to make it happen. Um, I have had my filmmaking dreams since I was very young, and I didn't think they were possible because people told me they were not. And people still tell me they're not as a female in the industry. Um, Just because other people think it's not possible doesn't mean that it isn't. And I think it's important to always stick to your convictions and you know what you can do, you know your abilities. So I think it's important to carry it through. Don't listen to other people because they have their own experience. And oftentimes the most critical people are the ones that aren't doing anything. Maybe they've put their dreams on the on the shelf and and didn't reach them. So no matter what other people say, just keep going. That's fair. Uh, I am uh, very much a big proponent for perseverance. Uh, in fact, uh, my one co-host, uh, he he tells everyone, he's like, I've got a song in my head for everybody. You know, everybody has their own theme song. And and I looked at him after he said that, and I was like, I bet you're not going to tell me mine, are you? And he's like, no, I'll tell you if you want, really want to know. And I was like, well, morbid curiosity has always gotten the better of me. What is yeah. my song? And uh it is high hopes. Uh, that song by um, Fall Out Boy. No, no. <laughs> so I was like, that's kind of ridiculous, but okay. No, no. no. <laughs> well, I mean, they may have covered it. No, uh, everyone thinks that silly old ant can't move that rubber tree plant. Everyone knows an ant can't, but he's got high hopes. He's got high okay. hopes. Okay. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. Well, my co-host is older, but like when he said that, I was like, oh, shit, that is me. That is so me. Because I, you got to realize, I, I've been doing this for 15 years and I have made things happen that I shouldn't have been able to make happen. 
mm-hmm. just through sheer perseverance and will. Same. And so, like, he told me that, and I was like, huh. And he's like, I don't mean it as an insult. I was like, no, no, I get it. I'm just gobsmacked with how accurate that is. That's funny. If you could, you've only known me a short period of time, but what would your theme song be for me just based on what you know? Oh, I don't know. That's not my thing. (laughs) (laughs) I think you can come up with one. Maybe I'll ask you later. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's it's not my thing. That's my co-host thing. It's it's so (laughs) everyone has those weird idiosyncratic things that they they do that they maybe nobody else is aware of. And when he told me that, I was like, huh. So now, like I, every time we're like out in public or we're hanging out together with other people, I kind of I always want to look over and be like, what's their theme song? <laughs> I, I like to look at people in public and like try to think of their backstories or maybe what they're going through that day. And so maybe that's the psychology part of, of my being, but I like to do that. And I, I feel like everybody is kind of fascinating. Well, you're also a storyteller. So, yeah, true. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I used to do that too. I, I, I suffered from really bad ADHD when I was a kid and I, I realized that I could manage it on my own somewhat by going to the mall um in my my local city and uh i would put like because every mall had a fountain for some reason like just right in the middle of it in our area like it didn't matter if you went to your mall or a mall two cities over they had a fountain in the middle of it for some damn reason and uh so i would sit with the fountain to my back and have that loud white noise and uh i would then try to listen to conversations of people going by trying to isolate and and learn to take in all of that sensory data and then manage it in a a wise fashion oh that's interesting i have adhd so (laughs) newly diagnosed but um i'm going you know i like that i like that That, i can see how that could work yeah, and it, it helps because like now um, I, I have what I call functioning ADHD, which allows me to multitask like a son yes. of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the I'm crash sorry. is real. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, some days you don't want to do anything, but then you feel bad because you're not productive. Are you that kind of person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't do, do well with uh, idle time. Same. What do you think is totally inappropriate, but is commonly seen in today's society? I think is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Why did I pick that number? (laughs) Um, Gosh, I think uh, I don't want to single out particular groups, but uh, I think it's inappropriate to, well, let's let's take a real example. So say on Facebook, for example, that's a, a platform that's not my favorite for this reason, but I think it's inappropriate for people to kind of uh, rain on someone's parade, right? So somebody is really happy about something and then somebody has to come in with maybe their experience like, oh, but you know, when I experienced this, like it wasn't, you know, like that's not necessary. I think it's completely inappropriate. If people want to have their happiness, let them have their happiness. Why? I mean, why does everything always have to be negative? We always have to turn it into something negative and some people can't help themselves. Let people enjoy things. You let people enjoy things. What famous person's memoir would you love to read that you haven't? Oh, that I haven't. Oh gosh. Um, I I know one I want to reread. I was thinking about last night, but um, I, I threw in that you haven't at the end because that's yeah. not actually part of the question. But I assumed, being that you are uh, someone who enjoys psychology and a writer and a filmmaker, that reading and especially like people's memoirs, getting into the nitty gritty of people, is something that you're you're already doing. So, what's one that you that you haven't read that you you want to? It might not even be written yet. I am the worst when it comes to reading. I'll be honest, I'm more of a book collector. I will start like five different ones at a time and never finish them. Um, probably the ADHD part. But uh, I, I do love autobiographies and biographies. And I was thinking the other day about one. It's it's escaping me now. I do still kind of, I don't know that I want this to be my answer though. <laughs> Well, okay, let me refine the question just a little bit for you. Yes, please. Um, who is one person who you don't know a lot about, famous person, that you would like to know more about, like to to know their their story, their memoir? Um, 
Oh gosh. Past, present, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Cause I probably read all of the ones I really wanted to. Um, but I would say I have not read, but I would like to Viola Davis's um, because I think she has some interesting stories to tell. You can even tell in her acting, she has been through some things. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the one I was trying to think of from the other day. Um, I really want to read hers, but I have not yet. I think she's, she's a very dynamic woman. She's doing amazing things in her career. So I kind of want to know the woman behind the woman. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. One final interview roulette question. What terrible movie do you love? All the movies I love are not terrible. <laughs> I have no guilty pleasures. I'm not ashamed. Um, I really like, and maybe it would be ridiculous to some people if they watched it today, but I really like Clueless a lot. Um, and I, it's, it's not a world I could relate to at all. Um, I don't know why that came to my head, but I think it, of that movie, I relate to Brittany Murphy's character the most because she's not of that world either. But wasn't, I guess. Wasn't Clueless a Shakespeare story? Yeah, wasn't it, it like Taming of the Shrew or something like that? Shrew. Yeah, it was based on Taming of the Shrew, but like a modern retelling. And I often don't like those, although I do love 10 Things I Hate About You as well. But I'm not ashamed of either. Of those. No, both <laughs> solid choices. Yeah, absolutely. And for, for many reasons. I mean, I think Clueless, you know, that you have a female director and writer behind that, which I love because that ended up being a really big film and still a cult classic today. And I still love Alicia Silverstone and follow her on social media. Um, but I like everybody involved with that project. They're still all working today. Paul Rudd is still working today. Brett Paul Mayer. Rudd looks exactly like he did in that movie. Yeah, right. So. Exactly. Yeah. So I love that they all, they weren't just a flash in the pan in that film everybody still has a successful career today and i think that's awesome yeah um one of my favorite uh, i love paul rudd as an actor mind you and like as a person um i more so love the fact that he trolls conan on a regular <laughs> basis i was just watching a youtube of one of those the other day <laughs> and, and the worst part is is that movie that he trolls conan with one of my favorite movies wait what what is the movie mac and me it does not matter what project Paul Rudd is on Conan's show to talk about. He he could be promoting Marvel. He could be promoting some romance movie that he's in or something like that. Yeah, it does not right. movie. He shows the same clip from Mac and Me every yes. single time. That's right. That's a great movie, too. <laughs> You're right. It'll be like he's there to promote Ant-Man and they're like, let's go to the clip. And, then, and it's, then it's the dramatic. kid falling off <laughs> in the wheelchair. He's consistent. I yeah. love it. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> love it. And like